Hi, it's Katrina. From an ancient sword with a mysterious script, to underground chambers with weird artifacts and a famous curse, here are 10 archaeological mysteries science can't explain. Number 10. Hanging Disc Better known as the Disco Colgante, this copper disc was made by the Moche or Mochica culture from the northern coast of Peru. The Moche made many discs made from large sheets of copper that they would then hammer into shape and decorate. Most of them have embossed creatures or symbols such as the sun and its rays. This one is very impressive. It is a gilded copper disc with a crab in the center with alternating plain and embossed discs on top and rings that radiate outward. There are fish in between, represented in great detail. The moche flourished from 200 to 850 AD, hundreds of years before the rise of the Inca. Scholars were so impressed by these discs that they call this period the Master Craftsman Era, and they are still trying to figure out what technology they use to make them. Perhaps the most mysterious disc that has gotten people's attention is this one. It is different from all the rest because it is cut in a spiral. Many believe it is cut in the shape of a spiral galaxy, representing our own Milky Way, and that there is a dark mark on one of the rays representing our place within the Milky Way galaxy. But there is no way they would have had the ability to see galaxies at that time. Or did they have some ability that we don't know about? We aren't sure exactly what the discs were used for. Theories range from shield frontals to decorative funerary or religious purposes, but so far, scientists are at a loss. Was it an artist using creative freedom, or is this symbolism for something much deeper than that? There's a lot we don't know about the moche, but this disc is apparently located at the National Archaeological and Anthropological Museum in Lima, Peru, so perhaps one day you can see it in person. Number 9. The Encoded Crusader Sword In July 1825, a 13th century double-edged sword was discovered in the River Witham in Lincolnshire, England. In 2015, the British Library appealed to the public for help deciphering a strange inscription found on the sword. It contains an undeciphered script which appears to be religious in nature. There is no way I'm going to pronounce this, so here it is on the screen. Despite numerous attempts to determine its meaning, cryptographers, linguists, and other experts remain baffled. A spokesperson for the British Museum in London stated in 2016 that the sword is believed to be of Viking origin, most likely with a German blade. It would have had a cross-shaped hilt, which is characteristic of swords of its period and is symbolic of Christianity. It measures 38 inches long, 6.5 inches at the hilt, and weighs 2 pounds 10 ounces. Most scholars believe the inscription is an abbreviated or shorthand combination of Latin and Greek. While researcher Mark Van Hasselt of Utrecht University has found information tracing the sword back to a type of crusader sword, it has not helped to better understand what its message means. Maybe you can solve it and didn't even know. Give it a try. Why not? Number 8. Pyramids of Sona it is easy to overlook the eight grassy mounds in a field, but known as the Pyramids of Sona, these formations have an unclear past. Located in Brasov County, Romania, roughly 155 miles from Bucharest, the country's capital city, the Pyramids of Sona are situated in two rows, with each measuring up to 100 feet high. According to local legend, the pyramids, which they call Grieti, were raised by giants during a time when a princess named Sona ruled the land. The mounds were created after the giants passed through the nearby Olt River and shook the mud off their feet. Another story claims that the mounds date back to the time of the Dacians, an ancient people who once inhabited the area and that the structures contain treasure. According to historians, perhaps the pyramids are burial mounds which house the graves of Celtic barbarians. They may also contain the resting place of Decebalus, the last of the Dacian kings. Archaeologists have found traces of ancient inhabitants, including ceramics, spearheads, an urn with ash, and even a tomb. These places were of great significance to somebody. Word has it that the mounds were once perfectly shaped pyramids, but that they were worn by erosion into their current state. Locals also believe that the mounds have special healing properties. For example, meat supposedly doesn't rot here, even if it's left out for days. The pyramids of Sona are largely unexplored by archaeologists, and local authorities have stopped residents from digging into them. Treasure hunters managed to dig a tunnel about 6 meters long before they were caught by the police. 
For now, their contents and history remain unknown. Number 7. Malta's Megalithic Mysteries The island of Malta is home to several ancient temples that pose more questions than answers about their builders. They were built during the 4th and 3rd centuries BC and are aligned to the equinoxes with some containing special markers for the solstices and even an ancient calendar marker. But besides this, not much is known about the people who made them. There are about 66 megalithic temples on Malta and Gozo, which is kind of a lot for being such a small area. Each temple is unique with different forms and decoration. Archaeologists and researchers consider these to be a masterpiece, representing a technologically advanced prehistoric culture. The builders had an intimate knowledge of the local stone and demonstrated enormous skill. Every year, a crowd gathers at Nidra Temple for the spring equinox, during which the sun illuminates the main altar located at the structure's western end. It's been doing this, without fail, for some 6,000 years, making this and some of Malta's other temples some of the world's oldest freestanding structures. But questions linger regarding Malta's great megalithic temples. In theory, people believed that the first settlers to Malta arrived 7,000 years ago. They descended from Sicilian farmers who brought no known building expertise with them. How would they suddenly know how to build megalithic structures 1,000 years later? And why? Researchers are unsure exactly how the temples were built, with some stone blocks weighing over 20 tons amid a lack of technology. Archaeologists have found chubby female statues, which may represent a fertility goddess or perhaps a mother goddess cult. There may have been an ancient people here before that we just don't know much about. Others have suggested that Malta is the site of Plato's famed mythical city, Atlantis. Spiral engravings mark the entrance to a temple which many point to as a symbol of the lost city. Who's to say? But it's a fun theory. Number 6. Phaistos Disc Discovered in 1908 at the Minoan Palace of Phaistos on Crete, the Phaistos disc is a fired clay disc measuring roughly 16 centimeters in diameter, with each side containing 242 undeciphered symbols arranged in a spiral. The disc is shrouded in mystery. Researchers are unsure of its origin, purpose, and meaning. Scholars have dated the artifact to sometime between 1850 and 1550 BC and have deduced that the writing is probably a form of Cretan hieroglyphics based on the language in use at the time. Popular Minoan motifs, including dolphins, cattle, and lilies, as well as their spiral arrangement, suggest that the Phaistos disc is of native Minoan manufacture. It was likely handmade, considering its varying thickness and diameter. There are 45 symbols total, which appear to have been stamped onto the disc. They also appear to be right-oriented, indicating that the mysterious text is meant to be read from the center of the disc outward. The writing is unlike any other of the period, including the linear A and linear B systems the Minoans were known to use, but all signs point toward it being a readable message, perhaps belonging to an ancient language that has been forever lost to us. There have been numerous proposed translations, and while many were disproven, the rest are unconfirmed. One of the potential unfortunate realities we must accept is that we may never know what the Phaistos disc says, but someone thought it was important enough to write down. Number 5. Rozirch Cave Monastery In the Carpathian Mountains of western Ukraine sits Rozirch Village, where there is a unique cave monastery dating back to sometime between the 13th and 14th centuries. Built into 70 million year old rock, no one knows when the monastery was founded and for what purpose. What we do know is that it was used heavily by pagans, as evidenced by artwork on the walls, but the rest is still a mystery. Local legend says that male monks fleeing the cave in Rus, a medieval political federation near modern day Belarus, built the monastery at Rozirsh. They chose the quiet Carpathian forest as the perfect place to dedicate their lives to God in a hidden location. There are two levels to the monastery. The lower level contains a large room that is believed to have served as housing for the monks, while the second level holds the church. But the specifics surrounding the monastery's history and the daily lives of its residents remain obscure. It was also reportedly the home of the St. Basil Women's Monastery, according to a 1761 description of the Diocese of Prismizil. But this this particular site no longer stands. Number 4. Bighorn Medicine Wheel Sitting at an altitude of nearly 10,000 feet at the summit of Medicine Mountain in north-central Wyoming's Bighorn Mountains is a mysterious stone pattern that spends most of the year covered in snow. It measures 80 feet across and has 28 spokes stemming from a central ring-shaped rock pile, or cairn, 
which is surrounded by six similar cairns throughout the wheel's circumference. The Bighorn Wheel is just one of the 150 throughout the American Northwest and parts of Canada, but it's among the most well-preserved and studied of these structures. Its origins are at least somewhat a matter of speculation, however. Archaeologists believe it was constructed over several hundred years by the Plains Indians, and that it's less than 1,000 years old. Remnants of the Shoshone and Crow tribes have been found at the wheel, in the form of ceramic shards, and it may have also been used by other tribes. Archaeoastronomer, that sounds like a cool job, Jack Eddy studied the Bighorn Wheel during the early 1970s and determined that prehistoric Native Americans probably used it as an astronomical observatory and calendar, and that it helped predict the position of the sun and other stars during the summer solstice, the longest day of the year. While the construction and use of the Bighorn Wheel has never been fully explained, research shows that Medicine Mountain, more generally, was a significant site to prehistoric Native Americans for around 7,000 years. Today, the site is a registered National Historic Landmark and is used by various Native American tribes as it continues to accurately predict the summer solstice. Number 3. Nan Madol Nan Madol is the only ancient city built on top of a coral reef. It was constructed on the southern shore of what is now the island of Pompeii in Micronesia. Its ruins, which constitute one of the oldest archaeological sites not on a heritage list, are made of elaborate stones and columns that are so heavy nobody knows how they were transported to the site. There are no other signs to tell us who the people who lived at Nanon Madol were, including no carvings or other artwork. They were just known as the Saudelur. Researchers know that the Saudelur ruled the island for over a millennium and that they were deeply religious, but they are far from painting a detailed portrait of the people. Signs of Nan Madol's earliest human activity date back to the 1st or 2nd century BC, and the artificial islets it sits upon were constructed around the 8th or 9th century AD. The actual structures, which likely house the elite ruling class, were probably not built until the 12th or 13th century. At its peak, Nan Madol was likely home to over 1,000 residents. Abandoned centuries ago, the tiny site sits seemingly forgotten and overrun by nature. Modern-day Pompeii, not to be confused with Pompeii, residents consider the ancient city to be a sacred site inhabited by spirits. Despite arguably being as remarkable as Easter Island, the other main megalithic site in Oceania, which receives over 50,000 visitors annually, Nan Madol sees less than 1,000 visitors per year. It's clearly a place of great importance, and efforts are underway to restore it and protect it, and perhaps its popularity will grow. But researchers remain at a lack for key explanations, including how the stones that built Nan Madol were quarried and transported, along with specifics regarding who the Saudeler people actually were. Number 2. Glazelle Artifacts in 1924, a 17-year-old French farmer named Émile Fradon got his foot stuck in the ground while plowing a field in Glazelle, France. Instead of being a regular hole, it turned out to be an underground chamber. Over the following years, more than 3,000 artifacts were allegedly found in the cavern, including items made of ceramic and bone, as well as masks and statues. The underground chamber that Fradon unintentionally discovered had a tiled floor and brick walls. One of the site's original investigators, a man known only as Viple, claimed that the cavern was a Gallo-Roma site dating back to sometime between 100 and 400 AD. The items within were placed into a museum. Subsequent explorers laid claim to even more outrageous findings. One physician and amateur archaeologist, Antonin Morlet, paid for permission to excavate the site. He found various Neolithic artifacts, including inscribed stone tablets, dating as far back as 10,200 BC and as recent as 2000 BC. Archaeologists and the public at large began to doubt the authenticity of said items after Morlay published his findings, leading to great controversy that persists into the present day. Experts searched the site and gave mixed opinions, with some dismissing it as entirely fake, while others said that certain artifacts, such as the stoneware pottery, were real. Meanwhile, some archaeologists wholly lent credibility to the site. This back and forth continued for years and has never officially been settled. The last official report, released in 1995, accused many of the artifacts of being forgeries, while dating others back to medieval times. But with so many conflicting opinions, who knows what really came out of this site? Was it an elaborate trick or an incredible historical find? Number 1. Hope Diamond Curse the Hope Diamond is a 45-carat blue gem roughly the size of a walnut. It is arguably the world's most well-known diamond. Many believe that the stone, which is worth an estimated $350 million, 
is cursed. Legend holds that the gem originated from the Kalur mine in Golconda, India, and that its curse began when a priest stole it from a Hindu temple. It is believed he suffered a slow and agonizing death. In 1668, a traveling French merchant named Jean-Baptiste Tavernier sold the Hope Diamond to King Louis XIV of France before he was mauled by a pack of dogs. Then, in 1792, the French crown jewels were turned over to the government and subsequently looted during the French Revolution. The violent fate of its previous owner Owners, Louis XIV and Marie Antoinette is said to be proof of the gem's curse. The Hope Diamond passed through many more hands, including collector Thomas Henry Hope after who it is named. Many of its owners reportedly suffered major misfortunes along the way, including financial ruin, the loss of loved ones, emotional despair, severe mental illness, failed marriages, and addiction. Skeptics of the curse claim that late 19th century journalists used it as an attention-grabbing headline to sell newspapers, and that while some of the Hope Diamond's owners experienced legitimate tragedies, other stories were little more than unconfirmed rumors. Others say that the bad things that happened to the gem's owners aren't necessarily correlated with their ownership of it. Fun fact, under ultraviolet light, the diamond produces a brilliant red glow, which not only helped fuel the curse, but also showed off what a wonderful scientific specimen this stone is. The curse supposedly ended in 1958 when jeweler Harry Winston donated rather than sold the Hope Diamond to the Smithsonian Institution, where it remains today. Thanks for watching! Do you think you can solve any of these mysteries? Let me know in the comments below! Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon!